Um, Smitty, obviously you were here last year. You were here this year. Where where did things kind of go wrong for this group, maybe injuries aside? Yeah. Uh, yep. Um, I, I, I don't like wrong. Yeah, the part there where you say wrong. I think that, I mean, it's the best league in the world. Um, and... Obviously, injury. There's a lot of variables, but obviously, injuries was a big part of that. Um, I think last year was, as you were talking about me being here last year. I thought last year we we had an amazing year. I think we rode the wave of um, uh, early in the season, where I talked about that's where you kind of need to get your points because then it kind of solidifies you uh, down the end. And we did the opposite uh, this year where we didn't get them early and then we were kind of in a dogfight late. And, uh, and then that's where you, it becomes really difficult because everybody's trying to, everybody's scoreboard watching and trying to find out what they need and how, how many points and how to sneak out points. And uh, the games get a lot tighter. And I've talked to you about that where like it feels like there's three different seasons during the season. And um, if you can kind of get yourself in the playoffs around Thanksgiving, Christmas time, it really gives you that that chance. And when you say wrong, I, we're everybody's like measured on the playoffs, right? And that's what we're measuring. I know that's what I, we're talking about here. But um, there was a lot of great stuff that we did. Um, but we are in the business of of winning, and I understand that. And, and not making the playoffs is it hurts, and I. Uh, in my career, I haven't missed the playoffs very much. So um, obviously, late uh, in my career, it, it hurts a little bit more. So this one's uh, this one's going to sting because I don't really know what's the next chapter for myself and uh, where that takes me. So um, it's tough. But to put one thing on what what did it for us, I, I'm not sure. There, I think there's just accumulation of, of a lot of things and. Um, we unfortunately did have a lot of man loss games, and that uh, never really helps. So then, from your perspective as a veteran, what type of growth comes out of a season like this, or could come out of? It? Yeah, well, I think it, it would be like a test where uh, everybody got kind of understands what it's like and what is it, what it is to expect to go deep. And 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 we did do well last year, where we. Um, we took a, a big step from the years before that everybody told me, and I wasn't a part of it. Mm -hmm. I just played against it, and I thought they, I thought as a group, we took a big step there, and it almost seemed like we took a step back a little bit this year. And what's that say, saying? Take one step mm -hmm. back, two, two steps, steps forward. forward. So, I mean, that's the goal. Um, I mean, I can give you all the cliche answers all you want, uh, but that's kind of one of the things is when you're dealing with a young club. Um, there's areas where. You can't take games off. You can't early in the season. You, the points they just don't come at the end of the year because it's that difficult. So, um, being around this a long time, it's like every game matters. Every point matters. And one of the biggest things that, if you really want to go to the scoreboard and watch, is that we didn't take a lot of teams to overtime. And those are. Uh, what do we have? Four or five, and some teams were at 14, 15. Right, that's 10 points right there that puts you in the mix. Right, so from what we were 81, that puts you to 91, and that's kind of was the, the brink. And that was with a lot of games that we lost. So there's a lot of things that uh, that I think as as a club gets older, you start learning. It's like you you play to get points, um, and then you try to win it. And uh, I think last year. When we went to overtime, we won a lot of games. We won a lot of shoot, shootout, and we never gave ourselves that opportunity. So I think there's just a lot of growth in, in, in that. But like I said, there's, it's hard to put one thing on. There's a multiple and a, a lot of things and variables that uh, kind of played into that. Brendan, you talked about you know your next step, your next chapter. I mean, have you talked about resigning, or is that is that hanging up the skates? Talk? I, don't, I don't know. Uh, personally, I hope it's not hanging up the skates. Um, I have not talked to uh, management here. Uh, obviously, I'll be restricted to the team till what July 1st, mm -hmm. which is uh, unrestricted free agency. And uh, I think I know that they have a lot of stuff going on. So at this moment, uh, they probably have their pecking order, 
and uh, hopefully there'll be some talk and and see where I stand. I love it here. Uh, I do want to be back, um, but more than that, I want to be back in the NHL. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and I thought I had a good year and and helped out uh, in multiple ways. I know that um, my voice or my my game away from on the ice is probably almost as impactful or more than it is on the ice. But uh, I'm still very pleased where I'm at as as a hockey player in this in this league, and uh, um, and so we'll see how <laughs> everything unfolds. Uh, but uh, if I'm if I'm back, I'll, I'll be quite happy because, like I just said, in my cliche answers, we did take a step back. But I want to be a part of that club going forward, and um, I think we have the right tools. There's probably a couple things that. Uh, additions that we can can use and that's like guys that were injured coming back it's not even just like additions to the team but it's like Dougie coming back it's like a lot of guys that kind of filling in and um, I want to be a part of that so we'll see how that all goes but uh, right now it's just kind of deal with um, everything uh, at foot at the moment and then uh, go forth one way or another there's going to be a, you know a coaching decision here um, and whether that's Travis or not I mean what kind of qualities do you think a coach for this team needs? Uh, what I saw with Greeny, I, I was impressed with uh, the accountability. I thought we played good defense near the end of the year. Um, and I think with a young team, that's how a lot of players learn. At least that's how, uh, talking to some of the older guys, that's how we learned. <laughs> and... Um, I think if if you don't get held held accountable for certain instances, you don't really know if you're making a mistake or not. And so then there's some teaching there, and uh, I'm not sure who they are looking for to take over. I was impressed with how Greeny came in, and and I thought he did a good job of trying to teach as well as move this team in the right direction. I mean, I have no idea what it's like to come in as. Uh, interim coach and I don't think it's easy by any means because systems change and you're trying to do that on the fly and the team followed but I thought we did a good job of that and um, I was impressed with with how things went uh, with our staff so if that's the way they go I think uh, and if I'm back I'm ha I'll be happy about mm -hmm. that but if I'm not back I think the teams are in a good hands with Greeny but I mean there's a lot of good coaches out there that I even, I even heard of so um I, more than the coaching staff, which is a huge part, is that I do see this team taking an, another big step, and I think fans should be looking forward to that because I I see this team easily play off next year, and uh, yeah, that's my words, and I'll and I'll and I'll hold that. Brandon, you, you sat next to uh, Nemo after he came up. Yeah. Obviously, at 19, 20 years old, he was playing close to 20 minutes a night. What did you see in terms of his growth and de development? Yeah, that's tough at that age. I thought he did a, a really good job. He came in. Um, he, uh, in my mind, he's he's a, an NHL defenseman, um, and he did a he did a, did a great job. It, it, I think as the year went on and the games got tighter, um, I think there's a there's some areas that he will learn because of more games played. And same with same with Luke. That's same with any young defenseman, myself included. Uh, the first year is kind of like to figure it out, see what the speed is, see what the strength is like. How much time do I have learning the system? He went through two different systems, you know, possibly three, you know. So there's a lot to unfold there. And I was I was more than impressed with how he came in and and he held himself and and how he played. So. Um, yeah, I always use that. The sky's the limit because with young guys like that with lots of talent, it is it is pretty impressive. And um, I just want him to continue to to keep his foot to the grind and, and keep getting better and keep trying to improve, and um, he'll be a long-time player here. Brandon, you mentioned that uh, Travis was a good teacher. We noticed that he's always walking around with a marker in his hand after a game. <laughs> it, it, are those for teaching moments, win or loss? And is that something different than what was happening before? Um, I don't, I don't know about the whole marker thing. Uh, I, I thought there was a lot of moments where he was teaching and trying to pull people aside and and go over things. For me, 
it wasn't as much, so I wasn't in a lot of those conversations. But they're one on ones, and they're like or or lines and whatever. And with the back end, we see Gilly a little bit more, so it's a little bit different. But I, I noticed that even in our meetings, uh, he was doing a lot of teaching. He went over a lot of things. He asked us a lot of questions. A lot of times, and this happens, is where coaches or even teachers in anything will ask a question and the older guys answer. You know, and a lot of times they were kind of like Smitty. You can't answer. I need to hear from somebody else, you know. And so that's good because then you're getting feedback from players that might not understand, right, and or not might not see it. And then you got to help them through that process, right. So um, I think that was good. And, and a lot of times, I think for myself, I had to kind of stop <laughs> answering it because it's more for the team than it it was just for me. But I wanted to like move on to the next. Well, how are we gonna? So, um, so that was that's a thing that I, I liked about Greeny. He he was trying to make sure that we were moving in the right direction. Guys understood their jobs, and then then it becomes muscle memory. Once you know where you're supposed to be, then you can let your talent take over. And uh, I like that. So um, that part I, I was uh, I was happy about. Um, I know Gilly does that, and he's very detail oriented, and I, I really like him on the back end because of that. Um, and so we'll see. Like I said, I don't know how everything will go, but yeah, he did do a lot of that, and uh, I would tip my cap to that for sure. Brandy, you spoke a little earlier about the main games lost. How big a loss though was Dougie? <laughs> I mean, I'm not positive of where our power play was. I don't think it was too high, and uh, he's known to be an absolute threat. Um, so. Wherever we were on the power play, yeah, uh, think of where we were last year, and that would probably put you in a pretty description. Or just look at where Dougie's been on the power play with any team. And uh, I bet you it's probably more than top half of the league every year. So um, that's a big loss, and that's a big loss in everything because that means you're not winning the special team game very often. And... It's so hard to score five and five in this league where um, you're probably not winning as many games. And so that's where it really comes down to. Power play is a big part. Um, so that's going to be one thing that, like, when I said an addition and the guy on our team, that's a huge addition. And when you have an elite shot like Dougie does, as you guys all know, is um, you end up winning games in overtime or you end up winning games late and – those late power play teams don't take as many penalties because they're worried because of guys like him. So um, I've penalty killed my whole life. I've always been aware when he's at the top. Uh, so that would give you an example of what I think about about him up there. And uh, that was a big loss for us, for sure. Brendan, you've been a part of this community. You had a cancer gym huh. event. Just looking back at these two years with New Jersey, what is it like to be a part of this organization? And what is it like to have these fans? Yeah, now you're trying to get me to be emotional. Like that's um, that was probably my highlight of the year uh, was the cancer jam. Uh, on top of that, all the guys that showed up for me that meant a ton. You see, there we go. So that was very for me. That meant everything. The fans that showed up, um, everybody. When I'm leaving the rank, chanting my name because of that. I think, I think that was one of my favorite moments because. Uh, it showed what the community is like. And uh, I was fortunate to be with the Red Wings and the Rangers for five plus years. And I was only here for a, two years. And I feel very close to these this fan base. So that meant a lot. And uh, it was cool. So uh, like I said, if I'm back, I'm going to do it again and, and try to be even more um, invo involved in, in the community. And um, uh, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> you got me there. But, yeah, no, it's, uh, it means a lot. I, I, I love it here. My wife loves it here. The family, we really enjoy it. And uh, we, we like to make this home for, for a long time. But, uh, like, it's a business, and we'll have to see how everything unfolds. But um, I thought um, I got real close with the fan base, and it was, it was great to kind of see what they're like and be a part of them. We hear so much about culture, and last year we heard a lot about the winning culture and the step that was taken there. How can you use this season? How can a group use this season to also build towards a winning culture? Because that 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 fire that you have inside uh, after losing and not maybe living up to expectations, or even just like like I said, we're in the the business of winning. When you don't, 
and you're not a part of that, it, it, it kind of drives you. And um, I think that's going to be a big step for us, and that's going to help us. And everybody's going to know what to expect and and uh, how much it means to get points early. And, and everybody takes another year. They're getting another year older and, and learning a little bit more, and I think that's where that that – step goes but that fire really I think that's gonna create that and then that culture that we've been trying to preach uh, as we're talking about the culture with all the fan base and everybody like I think that is how you grow and and, and become a winning team. Bass obviously um, you know a tough end of the year for you just being out can you sort of take me through what your rehab process has been like how close you are to returning and what it's sort of been like and um, yeah I uh, the, I, I honestly, I don't think the timing of the injury could have been any worse. Like, I think if we were in the middle of the season, I would be joining the group today, maybe, sort of thing. So, um, obviously, I'm happy that I'm healthy, but missing 25 games when, when the season picks up, and obviously a lot of those games are important games, and not being a part of that sucked. What, what type of mental challenge is that like for you, or was it like for you? Um, I've been injured before it's mm -hmm. not a position you ever want to be in I think there can be this misconception that you're like on vacation or something but mm -hmm. it's literally the exact opposite like um, Dougie went through it all year and I was spent a lot of time with Dougie and when the team goes away for 10 days on the road and you're at home on your own and you miss the guys you miss being a part of everything you don't really know what's going on and um, like I said the timing was just so unfortunate for me so to feel that you could have possibly joined today. Does that change? That doesn't change anything then for your summer and just how you train? Like you feel everything can be kind of normal for you? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to being able to train this summer. Last summer after doing my shoulder, I, I spent um, the entire summer, not, no, no time on the ice really, um, time in the gym, but obviously doing very specific shoulder related stuff. So um, to be able to get a, a summer of workouts and skates and actually training means a lot to me this summer. How much does what happened this year, you hope, fuel this this group that you're a part of? Going into next a year? A lot, yeah. a lot. I hope that it's easy to say that, you know, you can learn a lot through a season like this, but I hope there is a lot of things that guys are able to take away from this year, I think. Um... Even myself, like talking about the games down the stretch, like I don't, uh, I don't take the league for granted, and I'm a guy who is obviously a depth guy, and every year has to reprove himself and find ways to stay in the league. So, um, you know, talking about it earlier, missing games like that sucked for me. Like I, I think um, a lot of guys in a lot of different situations probably learned a lot of stuff the hard way this year. Nate, you weren't out there for that last Ranger game, but what was your reaction when you know the puck dropped and? So did everything else. Um, that was the one game that I I was really really kicking myself that I didn't get to be a part of. I I think you guys saw like what a teammate um, some of these guys are. I think like like Jeremy, Jeremy wasn't even here for when the original incident happened, and he's the first guy to you know step in and stick up for guys that he's known for a couple of weeks. So um, yeah, crazy game. I wish I was out there. What went through your head when you saw that hit on Siegs, obviously? You know, you got hurt, you know, and then... Um, <laughs> well, I understand the league, and I understand <clears throat> the fan bases and the controversy when you want to talk about the hits, and there's different angles and way to look at it, and obviously they'll have their opinions, and mm -hmm. maybe we'll have ours, but as the games went by and he kept hitting guys in the head I think it almost made mine look a little better right mm -hmm. like I if you went through my DMs like the amount of people who told me I should play with my head up like I I get that mm -hmm. um, but when he plays four or five six games later and um, keeps hurting guys maybe that made my case look a little bit different I think after a game like the outdoors up in Canada uh, yeah, um, never played in like a structured one, but growing up, um, played about as much pond hockey as I did regular hockey. We loved it. Yeah, uh, obviously a great game there. Uh, highlight of the season for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, for sure. I think um, the experience as a whole, I think even if I didn't have a good game, it, it felt like it was almost a chance for us 
at that time of the season beating the team we did, it felt like maybe that could we could turn a corner. We were kind of always looking for something as a group to build off of. Like we, for whatever reason, we couldn't string together three wins in a row, and there was no momentum, and that felt like that was maybe going to be what did it for us. And unfortunately, it didn't. But yeah, when you look back at a tough season, that was definitely one of the highlights. You mentioned being the tough guy has to reprove himself every year. What is it that you want to work on this summer that's going to translate to your game, or hopefully translate to your game next year? Um, you, yeah, you you get these questions uh, every year, and it's often a, a very similar answer. And um, as I get older, I guess my game might evolve, but not a ton. I'd like to spend the summer just getting strong again and. Um, you know, when you're not playing big minutes and that's your role, you just need to find a way to make one extra play a game or, like, maybe earn, like, one more shift. There's such little things, and um, I believe if you, you know, st- stick to that and keep working, it'll pay off. How, how tough a year was it for you coming into a new team, the injuries that you had, and just trying to, you know, get some ground here? Yeah, it was not, not easy, but... Uh... It is what it is. I, I mean, everybody has been in that situation at some point, and uh, there is no uh, no reason to to hide behind it. And it was a disappointing season, obviously, either from my uh, injury uh, or uh, my production, or playing only half a season, not even. So, and obviously the team didn't make the playoffs. So it's. It's been a disappointing season, but uh, at the same time, you, you learn from those mistakes. So you learn, uh, you move on, and uh, try to find your uh, try to find your uh, way to to back on top. And and yeah, it's it's not always easy, but uh, but it's what it is. I, I learned a lot this season about myself as well. And the one I found one positive thing on that. I I have a <laughs> Plenty of time to spend with my uh, kids and family, which is, which was great, and see how they, how they grow and mm-hmm. change on a daily basis was was awesome. So, always try to find uh, positive things too on on those injuries or bad seasons. So, yeah, but uh, it is what it is, and uh, just try to find my way on on a, on a way back. Back, back up. Will, will you be going to Worlds? Is that something that you're going to do? Or you don't that's, know that's my goal right now, yes. Okay. I've never been in Worlds. and uh, I always make a playoffs mm-hmm. in my uh, pro career, even if it was Czech or in, mm-hmm. in the U.S. So this is kind of a new new thing for me. And never had the really a chance to go, and it's in Prague. So mm-hmm. for us back home, it's a big deal. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I was going to say, what would that mean to you to be playing at home for your national team? It would mean a lot, to be honest, and never play in the world. And especially in a Prague, it, it would be awesome. And uh, my friends and family could see me playing after 10 years almost. So it's, it's nice. Do you have that free agency pending status? Do you? Uh, plan on, or have you spoken to the team about potentially coming back? Uh, I haven't yet, but we will. We will have that talk for sure, and I hope we can so- find some way. Uh, my my family loves it here, and and uh, yeah, we will have that talk for sure, and and uh, looking forward to it. And I hope and we can find some something to work, work things out. So, so how did you enjoy your time here in New Jersey this one season? Oh yeah, we did, and well, we were living in Nutley, a nice area. Uh, we love it there. Uh, I like to set up here. N- never hit the practice rink and uh, and a uh, 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 game ring. Game ring at the at the one place, which is which is awesome. And when you get older, you appreciate it more and more. So you don't have to <laughs> travel around. So it was it was great, and the organization is good. So perfect. If you do come back next year, I know obviously the Worlds are going to be in Prague, but obviously the Devils open the season in Prague as well. What would that be like to play in NHL? Uh, it will be probably, uh, yeah, something uh, and something I can even imagine before I start playing to play NHL game in in my uh, country, which will be one of the probably tops in my career. And yeah, if that's why I'm, one of the reasons too I want to stay here, <laughs> and uh, it will be great, yeah, to to play uh, home game basically NHL game in 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 front of my family and friends. It will be awesome.